Welcome back to Trains and Planes, where we will talk about blah, 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 blah. <coughs> okay, some new stuff to talk about today. Uh, another purchase for the layout. This was based upon, I have a lot of wiring to do. By the way, I'm trying a new setting on my GoPro. <coughs> Hopefully, it'll give a little better quality. And uh, I noticed something. If you're using the GoPro Quick to download your videos, it doesn't give it to you in full resolution. So... I'm trying a wider setting on my camera, see if I can finally get it all the way out to the edge. It's supposed to be 3800 by, I can't remember what it is, but it's, you know, 4K. And it definitely was not filming in 4K, it was doing a 4 to 3 ratio, and it wasn't even a full 4 to 3. So I want a 16 by 9, and let's see if I can get the GoPro to do that. So let's talk about what I got here. What I got here is terminal blocks. These are, I ordered these off of Amazon. And it's from a company. I cannot, I do not know the name of the company. So I guess Mila Peak. M I L A P E A K. Mila Peak.com. Okay, so. So I ordered these and I ordered more because I was about out of my little, <coughs> the clips that you use the connectors so I got the connectors and I got a bunch of these I got a hundred connectors and I got six sets of terminal blocks these are 25 amp so this should be able to handle pretty much anything I throw at it from the railroad's perspective <clears throat> now the the way this works is that you've got here a seems to still have a bunch of plastic on it so I'm gonna have to peel that off there we go all right blah 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 so these are insulated but basically what it is is <clears throat> on these terminal box anyway you have your input here your input runs across only to this strip so this comes with a jumper an insulated jumper and then to make matters even better it comes with a plastic shield right here I'll show you on this side you can see it right there this plastic shield keeps you from contacting any of these it keeps it safer now, I'm not really dealing with that kind of voltage but <clears throat> You know, it's just best to prevent accidents. So this way, you could attach one line input here, and it would run straight across all of them. So you basically, you could deal with one uh, input or one output. And the great thing about it is that, you know, these are fairly thin metal, so you could take metal uh, cutters and just go down. This one's a 12 one, so you'd go down one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you'd cut it right there. Another thing that I did recently with my GoPro, just so you know, is for those of you who have your own YouTube channels and use a GoPro, GoPro has an annoying timeout factor. So that means I keep my extra battery right here, along with my microphones. I have two different microphones. We've talked about that before. And uh, <clears throat> so this way, then I have to go through and cut out all the little times I clear my throat or I cough or say um or um or um or um. So, so's and ands and therefores and because, because I do these little throat clearing things when I'm trying to get my thoughts straight. Anyway, um, so the way it would work is if you're putting it in and you're going to run 12 taps out, uh, wiring is set in two legs so you have your positive and your negative and a lot of the lionel stuff it actually is in uh, a three leg system where it's you have a neutral ground and a hot wire so what it is is you would almost need to do that if you're going to run 12 taps off of your track not a bad idea i'll plan for that for the future i would need uh three of these if i was going to do all for accessories if I was going to wire them all to the same input source. And that's the next change I made. Let me pick up the camera and bring it over there. All right, so we're going to be doing a lot of fixing of stuff today. Let's see how much work I can actually get done. So what you see right there, this is the starter track power supply that came with, you know, when you buy your starter track, it plugs in uh, right there, I think. Yes. It plugs in right there and it powers the entire loop. You get an oval with your starter sets. Well, if you save these, you can plug this into your accessory bus 
and this will actually power the accessory bus I've got it switched this way so you press this one in now it takes the power from that it takes a little bit less power out of the main layout just to run my accessories it actually is not should not be taking it from the power this is just a terrible mess but this is how I got it to work I'm running three things in there and that's that's just asking asking for an accident so this 10 block I can take this one and I can make this one just for three accessories over there so it'd be one two three cut here one two three cut here one two three so that means I get one line coming in here it connects across these three one line coming in here connects across these three and one line coming in here so probably what I want to do is I want to turn it around because I think I got this backwards you should connect it so you have one coming in on three one coming in on four five six seven one coming in on one two three four five six and one so one four and seven all right so let's get to work let's go ahead and get this thing worked on so we got to take this top off the top just kind of pulls off as you can see it just sets in shallowly you got a spot in there for a screw so you can attach this like this all right so let's go ahead and loosen this thing up funny how yesterday this was so much easier to do but you haul out the gopro and no suddenly it's more difficult Put those out just in case these are sheet metal snips, but we'll see if this will work. Oh, beautiful. Use the right tool. That was easy. So now what we're gonna do is cut the gap. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good and Good. and then here we're going to gap the last one just so we're making sure we understand this one is the last one so we're going to pull this down so you can see what I'm doing making sure I got that gap good making sure I got the gap all right and then I basically don't need that one on it at all all right go to video three Nope. Now, to connect the lights, what I got is I got the 12 ways. Are these 10 ways or 12 ways? That's a 10 way. Oh, here's the 12 ways. I've got 12 ways to connect the lights. Those I don't need, even need to worry about. This one is the ground. You can see from the little black strip right there. I got number one through 12, and I got the hot wire right there. <clears throat> All right, really quick, I'm gonna take you over and show you this in a second, but what I'm doing is I'm hot soldering these, meaning I put the soldering iron down here, and then I touch the solder itself to the wire, not to the, not to the soldering iron. That heats up this and causes a better bond. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. Uh, here is an end, I got it cut to a one foot section because that should be enough to connect the wires and the uh, to the terminal connector section that I got prepped up, which I, now I can't find it. And I made this thing up and I've got it here somewhere. Where is my terminal connection? Anyway, um, all right, so I think I got it over here. Yes, yes I do. All right, so Basically, it's just going to connect like that and that, and then uh, the, the ground section will have its own wire. All right, that's it. I'll be showing you this in a second. All right, next sequence. All right, so here I'm going to go ahead and measure this again, so that way you can see it. So what I want to do is I want to measure this out to about one foot. There you can see the one foot mark right there on the wire now I got to strip some of that so basically I'm going to cut it right there and cut that all right <clears throat> now this is 14 gauge speaker wire that I'm trying to put into a I don't remember what size these are if these are 18 
they aren't going to fit. Well, something I've been doing for a very long time is I've been I've been taking wire cutters and I'll cut away some of this so that it fits onto there. So we want to test fit it. See where I need to do my cut. I just want to put it right there, so it's going to be cut to right about there. All right. So what I do is I'll cut at it and try to get it onto the connector. And I'll put a little drop of solder in there because essentially, as you can see, right here, I've got it cut to fit inside there, but it joins right there. So if I put a drop of solder right there, even if I don't, just by contact inside the, the this part of the wire, it's gonna it contacts there. Any wires that are out at the edge that I cut off are still gonna get power just because they're making contact. So Helpful little rule to keep in mind. Wires make contact. Anything that can conduct will conduct if you allow it to conduct. And basically, you'll remember this from the when I did the overhead layout. I basically kept measure, cut a few strands, measure, cut a few strands. It makes a horrible mess. But I, sh I think I showed that on there. It's basically it's the same concept. We're just going to keep do some twisty. Will it fit? Will it fit? Will it fit? And lo, behold, it fits right through there. All right. So now I'm going to show you the hot solder process. This is better than cold soldering. Keep this in mind. Put that right there, and then we touch this to the wire, not to the soldering iron. I can cold solder that because it doesn't matter. All right, there we go. All right, so you saw the whole process. Now I'm going to cut this off and just do some work. All right, my work area is kind of a mess. I got screws right here to attach this underneath my layout. I got the cover right here, but basically this is how it works. I got all the hot wires connected to one, two, three. I got the negative wires, four, five, six. Or positive wires, positive and negative, you know what I mean, the ones that aren't red. And then over here on 7, 8, 9, I got the ground wires. So, because Lionel runs on the 3 system. So, I just need to get a strip of electrical tape right here. I didn't have a section of wire that isn't long enough. Probably not the best thing, but whatever. I got it soldered, so it should stay. <clears throat> Alright, so, now I've drilled a hole. Over right there and I've got the wires going down that and we're going to take a look underneath the wires these are the wires that are coming from my track to the elevated track section that's not the important part the important part is uh, these wires right here the single wire is the ground wire these are the other two wires so all I got to do is just mount that right up here and I should be good to go. So that's 18 gauge. Oh, let's see if it strips in. Yep, that worked. All right, that solid strand wire. This is stranded wire, and all you gotta do is do an infinity pigtail, and we are good to go. And then just solder that. Now you can see the wire, the soldering iron, part of my big ugly face. All right, there we go. So that's pretty good to go. All right, so the red goes to the one with the white stripe. All right, we got a complete spaghetti junction of wires. But basically what you're seeing now is this is hooked up. This is wired up. Right here, 
moving my ugly face out of the way. Right here is the uh, gate man hooked up. Let's see if we can get that zoomed in a little bit. A little sort of shown, showing. All right, top wire, middle wire, bottom wire. Those are the, uh, that's the gate man. So I'm gonna get that wired up. I got this thing set in place. The wires are strung in and we are good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off and get to taping and wiring and stuff and we'll be... Okay, we're back. All right, so all together, everything's done. I got everything wired up. You see I got the gate man there. Probably heard him pop a minute ago when I had the Polar Express running through it. And last but not least, I got this one hooked up. I do not know why the red light on this thing is not working. Um, I don't want to replace this because, like I said, this came off the Engine House Trains website or uh, layout. And speaking of which, you'll notice this piece of track and this piece of track. These are from the Engine House Trains layout, in-store layout. There we go. But there you go. I got green and red. I got a green light there. I got the gate man there. All right, so there you go. Everything worked pretty good. So next I need to wire up the lights. Remember, comment, like, subscribe, and we will see you later.